That he did, and Link Jarrett just over the moon about the performance of Joe Charles. Three innings of shutout baseball, career highs in innings pitched, in strikeouts, and Cam Leiter had 12 strikeouts himself. And so the Knowles able to finish things off eight to three in game one. And that gives way to the nation's ERA leader, Jamie Arnold, who's ahead 0-2 against Zion Rose. Yeah, you see that .52 ERA. And that's gonna get underneath the glove of Smith. Rose can fly, trying to get into second base, he will. Tough play for Smith coming in. However, that's probably gotta be an error on the Knowles third baseman. I mean, you saw him immediately go to his chest to let Jamie know, hey, my bad. I actually gave it a hit. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, in the big leads, he's going to get an error on yeah, this every that's, time. That's an error on that That is a that is a questionable decision there, but a hit. And Rose will take it. He'll take that every day of the week. He's got it second base. His average will go up. And that'll go to Dylan Hoy. So yeah, they are going to change the call to E of five, by the way. And I'll tell you what, this is, plays into what Louisville likes to do. They got speed at second base, bunt the ball, get him in the scoring position, maybe something happens. I'm talking to Dan McDonald before the game, he just thought yesterday his team was ready to play. He felt like Gongora gave them a good start. The Knowles just made it tough and they didn't capitalize when they had the bases loaded in the seventh and nobody down. He was excited to see how his team would respond in game two. Yeah, and like you said, too, with you should get the butt down right here. They're going to test Smith again. This time, the talented third baseman makes the play, but Rose down to third. Hoy did his job sacrificing the yeah. Cardinal center fielder. Cam made that play look easy. But we talked about, you know, and you were talking about Gangora last night, and he was. He pitched great. Coach Donald said he just, just wasn't quite able to put him away when he got two strikes. And you got to give credit to the Knowles hitters for that. Now here's JT Benson. Benson, the senior from Crestwood, Kentucky. They're on the year hitting 300. Got a chance to give Louisville the lead early. That's going to go to the backstop. Here comes Rose McGuire, Holbrook playing catcher today, and the Cardinals are going to get a run. That's how you draw it up if you're Dan McDonald. Maybe not exactly like that, but scoring in the first inning, and the Cardinals lead one to nothing. Yeah, you know, and you got to let that, Jamie just let that pitch get away from him and sail away. Nothing Holbrook could do right there. So the Cardinals manufacture a run without a base hit. Here's the batting order. Rose, Hoy, Benson, Napleton, Klein, King Jr., Keelan, Beard, Humphrey. Couple changes for Dan McDonald. And the Cardinals will put pressure on you. You see Napleton leading the team in batting average at 387. He's got a tremendous amount of pop. 29 home runs a season ago. Playing in Division II. He's got seven of them already this season. And Arnold looking like himself there with the strikeout of Benson. Yeah, there's that fastball that we talk about that you see from Arnold so well. He gets such great elevation on that fastball. It just looks like it's rising to the hitters. And when he throws that pitch in the top of the zone, it's difficult for them to catch up to it. Two down in the inning. First pitch, Napleton and Smith again having trouble this inning. And it'll be safe, so a struggle for Florida State's third baseman at the hot corner here to start game two. And that's not something you've seen this year with Cam Smith. He's been playing a great solid third base. And they're gonna give a second error to Smith in the inning. Matt Klein steps in to the box. Yeah, 
Yes, yes, yes. Did that clip Klein? It did not. He's standing there down to second. Klein saying it did hit him. That hit his bat. A or signaling foul ball. Third base umpire Adam Dowdy, who was home plate last no. night, put his hands up. I Well, I'm telling you, everybody's taking a minute to get settled in the game, too, here. I, even myself, I felt like the active hitter act like it hit him. So just a wild pitch. And Klein sitting in there, hacks away, fouls it back one and two. Klein on the year 323, two homers, 15 RBIs. He'll play first base. Again, a Louisville team that loves to change their lineups. On the ground. And the play made by Ferro. Louisville thinks this club can do. It's something that blew my mind researching last night. Louisville has lost eight consecutive ACC series. Yeah, that's, you would not believe that with the talent that Louisville has put out there. That is really, that's, a, that's, that's hard to believe. Especially when you consider that the Cardinals have maybe been the most dominant force in the ACC since making the transition from the Big East. Swing and a miss at 89. Max Williams getting the start in the center. There's Gavin Keel and Dylan Hoy up the middle. Saw that on your screen. Nice pitch there. Breaking ball. Dipping down and away. Williams not able to get it. And it's one down for Webster. Yeah, quick work right there. Three pitches, strikeout. Is that a breaking ball or a changeup? I think that could have been left on left change, to be honest with you. I saw Williams also walking back to the dugout telling Coach Jarrett he thought it was a change. So you saw Williams lead off. Cam Smith, James Tibbs, Jaime Ferrer, Daniel Cantu, Grand Slam monster, Marco Dingus. Drew Ferro, McGuire Holbrook, and Alex Lodis. Well, Webster getting into the low 90s there with that fastball, 91 to Smith. Yeah, pitch before was 90. Cam Smith now hitting 447 on the year. The 1-1 one, one. off the end of the bat. There's that changeup right there we were talking about. Great arm speed. Eight to 10 mile an hour difference on it from his fastball. What do you go to here, one, two? I'd go back to the changeup. He did. It was soft to the third base. Logan Beard makes the play. And two up, two down for Webster. And the Knowles first. Webster's done it on seven pitches so far here in the opening frame. Now James Tibbs. Ten home runs in that bat, 38 RBIs. First pitch swinging. It's going to be a tough play for Beard. Going back into the shade, drifting, making the grab. Trickling into foul territory. Nice work there from the veteran to really Introduce Jamie Arnolds, who has been the most consistent pitcher in the ACC and in the country to date. The sophomore from Tampa, Jesuit High, a powerhouse in baseball. And he's just gotten better each and every year. Starting in high school, now coming to Florida State in year two. Fastball pumped up now to 95, 96. He's throwing a two-seamer. That's confusing some people. The slider has been incredible. He's even got a changeup that he can go to. Yeah. The two seems still a work in progress for, for him. The slider has definitely improved for him. But it's just that fastball, man. And you talk about it, 90, 92, 96. And tonight, he's just been living at 92, 93. He hadn't even really gassed any of them up yet. But it's his consistency in the zone that's so different than what it was last year. Last year, he was working a lot of full counts with walk guys, just put him in bad situations. But this year, in the this summer in the Cape, I mean, it kind of just turned everything around for Arnold. 
Eddie King Jr., a 1-2 count coming from Arnold, who was a Cape Cod League All-Star. As Chris mentioned, the success he had. And that fastball, another strikeout, comes from just a unique arm angle. And on that vertical axis, just starts climbing the zone. As Well, and in actuality, it doesn't, but it it looks that way to a hitter. And so, yeah, it makes it really difficult when he gets that fastball going. I mean, he literally can almost say, and you see right here, you see the heat on those pitches right there on the heat map. Most of those fastballs that he throws that you're seeing that, they're up in the zone. When he gets that thing elevated, it is difficult for anybody to hit. In-game shout out to our producer, Alexander DiCapio. It's pretty good stuff there. Good work from the graphics team too. I mean, you talk about his numbers. I mean, God, opponents hitting under 175 against him. The you know, strikeout to walk ratio is unbelievable. 53 strikeouts to seven walks coming into the game. Lodi's had trouble with it. Uh-oh, and the Knowles infield to start has been a mess. That is probably going to be the third error on Florida State right out of the gate. E6. Yep, E6 given Link Jarrett, who prides himself on defense, the Knowles were actually top five in the country coming in in defensive fielding percentage. And so three errors right out of the gate. And they had two last night as well. I don't know if this is playing into it, but maybe Kirby Kander, our director, can help show. But there are some shadows from the grandstands at this time of day that are behind the pitcher's mound and covering about half the infield. Well, typically those shadows are really difficult for the hitters. Logan Not Beard so taking advantage of extra outs. That hits the foul, excuse me, the light pole. It's a home run above the screen. Louisville is capitalizing on Florida State's miscues. Yeah, and again, another error leads to another run. So now you got three runs and two of those unearned, but tip your cap right there. Fastball up and away. Beard able to drive it in the right center field for a home run. It's a terrific response from Louisville. You see right there, good piece of hitting by Beard. So Jamie Arnold's given up three runs with one of them being earned. That one, Humphrey in the left. He will stop at first, big turn, gets back in there as Ferrer sliding. And that's not taking advantage of anything. That's just a clean knock for Humphrey, who's had himself quite a weekend. Now for about a game and some change. And actually a really good play by Ferrer out there in left field, cutting that ball off and keeping Humphreys to a single. Humphrey six for six on stolen bases this season. Back to the top of the order for Zion Ross. See, this is something different for the Knowles that they haven't had to deal with this year. You know, you got three runs and two of those being unearned with the defense that you talked about how they've played. See how this plays into the Knowles the rest of this game. There's a strike. Nice slider. Another off-speed pitch, 0-2. Ross reached on one of those errors early. That was the first batter of the game. A little chopper to Cam Smith. He'd come around and score. And he left that breaking ball up. Too good of an 0-2 pitch right there. Coming into the weekend, Arnold's only given up two earned runs in six starts. 0.52 ERA. There's the fastball climb in the zone. And Zion Rose goes down. That's where he's best. Up at the top of the zone and a little out of the zone, up high with that fastball. So many chases. It's the third strikeout 
Here for Arnold. That gives way to Dylan Oy. Breaking ball, a strike for Jamie Arnolds. Boy, 362 average on the year. One home run, seven ribbies. Check back. Humphrey in there okay. And against Clemson last weekend for Jamie Arnold. Seven innings, one earned run, two walks, nine strikeouts on 110 pitches against one of the best offenses in America. Playing in a park in which not pitcher friendly. And I'll, and I'll tell you what, he gave up that run the first inning. And then he was just, he kind of hit, he's like, oh, oh, you're going to score on me? Never mind. Got ticked off and lights out after that. Runner going, throw down, not in time. Humphrey's got the bag stolen on Holbrook. Pitch was a ball. And that's what McDonald's Cardinals do. They will put the pressure on you on the bags. Over the last 10 years, they have stolen more bases than teams combined in the ACC have attempted. If you put the other 14 teams in the league, I mean, it's incredible. That I mean, is it's, insane. I mean, it's just what they do. Ultra aggressive. It's part of the DNA of Louisville baseball, something that's made them so successful over the years. Well, and you've seen it already here early in the game, like you said. Humphreys with the stolen base. Zion Rose stretching that air and, and getting the second base on a ball that barely gets out of the infield, which then led to a run. Last weekend in Winston-Salem, Louisville faced a similarly dominant pitcher in Chase Burns of Wake Forest. They battled him well. They actually had a lead on Burns. The Deacons would come back and win that game. Arnold, Louisville's head coach, five College World Series appearances. As Ferrer, first pitch swinging, and Beer to put out. Uh, four outs on nine pitches. Efficient pitching right there. That's what we talked about before the game. We said Webster would be aggressive in the zone. That's exactly what he's been. One down, Daniel Cantu. The senior from Jacksonville. Began his career in Tampa at USF. He's been off to a tear in his final year of college baseball. Power has started to come in. Hit one at Clemson, hit one against Florida. In the middle of the week in Jacksonville, back in his hometown. In front of his family and friends. Where he started at Creekside High in his prep days. Over there in Duval County. And he's second on the team in doubles just behind Perot. You see that right there, 393 batting average in his last eight games. Three-0 pitch, rare walk from Webster. And Knowles have a one-out base run. Junior college transfer Marco Dingus with plenty of pop in his bat. Steps into the box. Two doubles and a grand slam, five RBIs last night. First pitch inside corner. Brandon Henson, the home plate umpire, here this evening. Empire State native for Marco. See the numbers, back over 300, first career grand slam. We mentioned it's six of them already for Florida State on the year. The program record is eight. And the depth of the Florida State lineup has been showcased all year. It maybe wasn't highlighted any more than it was last night. When the top of the order for Florida State was trying to figure things out, the middle of the order got it done, and Din just was in the six hole. Yeah, and like we talked about early in the year when we were talking, I mean, this lineup can hurt you one through nine. I mean, anybody in that lineup can go yard at any time. And that makes you very, very dangerous as a team and as a pitcher because you never really get a chance to just relax and feel like, okay, I can just attack this guy with all my pitches here in the zone. you got to be a little bit 
a little bit cuter with some of your pitches, and that's when mistakes happen. He had all three extra base hits for FSU. Even working on getting to his backside, right? Trying to go the other way. That's where they feel his power plays best. When he can get the backspin on the ball and really drive it, some of the highest exit velocities on the team come off the bat of Marco Dinges. Yeah, we talked about his violent swing that he takes. But even when he has two strikes, he doesn't really let, I mean, he just doesn't swing them and miss a lot. Cantu at first. One, two coming. On the ground, that's gonna be a wonderful play from Beard. Tries to go to second. Everybody's safe, but you gotta give Beard a lot of credit. That prevented extra bases and potentially a run. It wasn't hit hard. Definitely two bases for each guy. So Logan Beard keeps it in the infields. Yeah, Beard makes a heck of a play right here. You know, he hits a home run last inning. And then you see this play down third. We'd have second and third right now for sure for FSU if he doesn't make that play. Two on, one down, Drew Furrow. Talented second baseman, a legacy. His father, Adam Furrow, played with the guy to my right in the booth. And Furrow, a switch hitter who began his career at, U at US UCF, excuse me, rival of Daniel Cantu's, Daniel Cantu's USF. Knowles added a lot of pop into the lineup via the transfer portal. He sure did. 0-1, swing and a miss. And what Fora was 15 last year, Cantu 11, low D 16. It's a lot of home runs coming in. Fora had an RBI single last night, extended his hitting streak to four games. In the dirt. Swing and a miss. That's two down. Heads up play from Cantu. He takes third. But there are two outs. Yeah, good pitch right here by Webster. Down and out of the zone. It's Fro chasing, but Cantu doesn't hesitate. And I'm actually kind of surprised right here. Fro stepping on the ball, going back in there. They didn't kill it. But worked out well for the Knowles. Was the first strikeout, excuse me, second strikeout. Check down in my book for Webster. He got Max Williams to K as well to lead off the game. Runners on the corners, but there are two down. Here for Webster is McGuire Holbrook steps in. It's been a catcher tandem so far this season for Florida State. McGuire Holbrook, Jackson West. Coaching staff likes what each of the guys do a little bit differently. Neither separated themselves from the other defensively in the offseason. And so, you've got two kids who can really hit the baseball. Holbrook, a little bit more power than West. He'll see the lefty here today. But Holbrook, a former All-Big 12 performer at West Virginia, has battled some injuries in his career. Never really got going last year. But the numbers so far, 350 on the season in 40 at-bats would say that he's been solid for the Knowles at the plate. He has, and not to be outdone, Jackson West is kind of, they've been mirror images. Yeah, one on the left side, one on the right side. And both have been doing really productive things at the plate. Holbrook in Orlando, Florida native. 2-1 pitch coming. I love the way Webster changes tendencies, right? On counts that would be expected firm fastballs, he's going off speed. Yeah, he's that crafty lefty that people like to say. You know, he pitches backwards. You're going to see fastball and breaking ball counts, breaking balls and fastball counts. 2-2. Two -two. Tied him up. Swing and a miss. Webster out of it. No. Coming back to Tallahassee before the game against the Gators on Tuesday night was if you want to play in the major leagues, you're going to play 162 games a season. You've got to be able to dump weekends and focus pitch by pitch. Nothing can linger. Success, failure, so to speak, 
you can live in the moment, let it hurt. And then he went back to his days at Notre Dame and he goes, 2022, we win game one at Tennessee with the Irish in the Super Regional. Game two is this one comes in and hits Benson. And so Benson will head down to first. Game two, we get spanked by the Volunteers. Told my team, we can either dwell on it or we can come out tomorrow because the game, the season's over if you don't win this game tomorrow. We don't have time to really worry about this. Everyone knows what happened. Notre Dame knocks off the mighty Tennessee Volunteers who had like the best regular season in college baseball history and they advance to Omaha. Yeah, and it just goes to show you kind of what Link Jarrett's made of too and his mindset and how he teaches his kids. And, you know, I think that was the situation last year and he's able to bring these guys in and now everyone's starting to buy into the system and what he wants and you're really seeing the fruits of his labors early on this year. And Tibbs had to battle the sun coming in. A ball hit a mile high there off the bat of Napleton. He does make the grab. There's one away. Matt Klein steps in. Benson at first. Right, only one, one. Napleton one for four. Last night, excuse me, uh, Matt Klein pinch hit last night. Is the runner going? Foul tipped. Kind of got Klein right where he wants him. He's got another strikeout. And I'll tell you what, this goes to show you just about Jamie Arnold, the maturity he's starting to show. And you see this perfect pitch right here on the black 0 2 fastball. Klein thinking breaking ball, late on the fastball. But Jamie Arnold's probably three miles an hour slower today than he's been all year in his starts. But because of how he's pitching, being able to locate the slider and move the fastball up, in and out, he's still just as dominant as he's been in his other starts. Well, Jamie Arnold is on one day short rest. Had to pitch Saturday against Clemson due to the doubleheader. What made what Cam Leiter did yesterday amazing was that he was on two days short rest. And again, Florida State just handed an ideal situation this week. Friday not being able to play at Clemson due to weather. Played two full games. I mean, there was a heartbreaking weekend at Doug Kingsmore. Then they've got to come back. They came back to Tallahassee at 2 in the morning. Link Jarrett said they didn't go to bed, the players, until 3 a.m., then had to get on a bus and go to Jacksonville. Didn't get back till late night again, basically Wednesday morning. Then you're playing Thursday. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a lot, but I mean, I'll tell you, like you said, Leiter responded really well, and everyone's a little different in how their bodies respond and how you get used to a routine. One, two, swing and a miss. Ran the heater to 94 at that time, and King goes down. It's Williams and Smith. Against the offerings of Evan Webster, who so far, two innings, gone pretty well. There was some traffic in the second inning for him. But he worked his way out of it. And he can pitch backwards. He's got a complete feel for four pitches. Evan Webster, again, a guy who could have been coming out of the bullpen for Dan McDonald and Roger Williams this season. His number called to get into the rotation, and he has done an admirable job. And he has, and like you said, as soon as he told us, his pitch ability, his aggressiveness in the zone, he has shown all of that here today. And really just kind of stuck with the three pitches today with the breaking ball, change up and fastball. We really hadn't seen him mix in the kind of cutter slider hybrid he's got. He 
He's got Lodis at a 1 2 count. And he mows him down, swing and a miss. There's that changeup. Fourth strikeout here for Webster. Yeah, he went two fastballs out of the zone, then goes change up right down the middle and just got Lodis out in front. Four Ks already for Webster. Chris, you were a guy who could pitch off your off speed, right? A guy who could flip whatever he wanted in there. What's the key as Williams' first pitch offering? Should be two outs. Here he's coming in and making the grab is Eddie King Jr. The efficiency right now from Webster standing out, but what were some of your keys as you came in as a guy who could pitch off the off speed to keep opposing lineups off balance? Well, you know, coming as a reliever, especially early in my career at FSU, you know, that's kind of what it was. Breaking ball, breaking ball, breaking ball, and then go to fastball. So you really had to have a feel for that breaking ball and show that you could throw it or 11 wasn't putting you in the game. And so, you know, I, I really learned that my freshman year after redshirting, um, really trying to find that breaking ball and kind of get a control of to where I could throw it any time they count. It really got to the point sometimes where my fastball command wasn't there and I would just go breaking ball and literally it would be three in a row. Um, so, you know, when you got someone like Webster who's doing it with three pitches and you saw Leiter do it last night with three pitches, actually with four, um, that really makes it difficult for a hitter. And then when you have command of a fastball like that, you, you really got opposing hitters off balance completely. You Just do. guessing. And, and I still think the changeup's the best pitch in the game. If you've got a really good one, you've got the arm speed, you don't slow anything down. It's just such a difficult pitch for a hitter to make adjustments on because you're, as a hitter, you have such a short time to make a reaction and hit the ball. And if that pitcher's in the same arm slot, same arm speed, and you're trying to pick that up, it's just really difficult as a hitter. Prior to the season, Webster had made just three career starts. Oh, tried the inside corner. Just missed. Logan Beard took a step towards his own dugout at third base. That's how close it was. Yeah, really good pitch by Webster. A little off. Webster, a Sterling 3 on 9 ERA. 22 appearances last season. 19 out of the pen. 35 innings. Batters hitting just 246. He's top five in the ACC in ERA. 248, and it continues to go down. Currently sitting at a 2.27 ERA. Full count offering to Smith. And it's ripped. Fair ball just inside the left field line. Smith has got extra bases as he trots into second. I'll tell you what, great piece of hitting by Cam Smith. Last year, I think you would have seen him make an offer in that fastball that was off the plate in. Instead, this time he spits at that pitch, then gets something he can do right here on a full count and rips it down the left field line for a double. Quick hands. The double for Cam Smith is his seventh of the season. Now the Knolls looking for some two out magic. The runner at second. Here's James Tibbs. One of the best hitters in the country. First pitch swinging. Right center field. Rose able to make the grab. And the inning is over. A 7 8 9 for Louisville due in the fourth against the offerings of Jamie Arnold's. Who so far, he's got the stuff. It's three innings. And six strikeouts, hasn't walked anybody, only one earned run, and just two hits. However, Louisville has taken advantage of every opportunity given as Keelan almost beat Arnold to the back. Arnold got a late break off the mound right there. Good hustle, though, to get over there and make the play. So Arnold able to just touch it right before Keelan was able to get there. And so one down. But that's what Louisville does, right? Pressure. And you at see, all times. You see this, he gets a late break, but Cantu still follows it through there, makes a good feed, good play by the first baseman. Logan Beard went all the way around, got tied up. 
It's a strike as the ball went to the backstop. The 0-1 pitch to the Cardinals third baseman. Misses high. One and one. Beard, one of the team captains, five of them for Louisville this season. Tried to snap in a breaking ball, could not. Shot out of a cannon back in 22 for Louisville. All ACC freshman team. He hit 310 that season. He's a gritty at bat. And he's versatile. He can play at third, at second, pretty much anywhere in the infields. Last season, 282 with seven home runs. Works the count full. He is a Louisville, Kentucky native. Went to North Oldham High School. Three, two. That time, Arnold snapped a really good one in there. The Absolute. backwards K. I'll tell you what. What a great job pitching right there by Arnold. Beard had taken him out of the park opposite field with the fastball, and he pitched him backwards this entire at bat. Went back foot slider, then painted a slider, and then painted another one back door on a full count when Beard was looking for fastballs on all three pitches. Great job. Yeah, I know you appreciate a good breaking ball. Well, I do, and I just I, I appreciate it, from, especially from some guy who can beat you with his fastball at any time in the count. But it's like, oh, by the way, I can do it with this pitch, too. That pitch there from Arnold misses a little bit low to Isaac Humphrey. 1-0. Hit hard on the ground. Throw. Able to glove it out of a hop and make the throw. Clean inning here for Jamie Arnold. He goes. What a legendary final campaign for 11. A team that went from being one of the last four in, some people saying they might have been the last team in, to knocking off Georgia in that park, to going to Baton Rouge at the box and winning that, and then knocking off Arkansas game one of the College World Series, Ferrer, base hit, and the Knowles have a leadoff runner aboard. Yeah, you talked about this one park. There's two parks, but that one was the biggest one I wished I could have played in. I never got to play it was the box. The atmosphere there, you know, as, as well as Starkville, Mississippi. Those were two places I wished I could have gone to play as a player that I never got to play. I went to the box that year for it. And when Colin Baton Rouge came on by Garth Brooks, I'm telling you, the box is a special place. As intimidating an environment as you'll find. And that's what made it so incredible for Florida to save that season. And they did it in two games. Yeah. Didn't need a game three. Nope. And the party was on. Ling Jarrett was adamant. He said, look, we've got to get back to Omaha. But this time, I'm walking off that field with the trophy. It's got to happen for us. That's the goal here at Florida State. He said, I'll do it for 11. I'll do it for everyone who came before who played for him. I'll do it for this fan base. Yeah, I think, you know, anybody who played for him, especially even, you know, that spent those three to four years, and some people like me, five years, that's the one thing you wish you could have given 11 more than anything, was that national championship. You can see every College World Series appearance on that banner. I mean, you see that. I mean, I was part of 6, 8, and 99. Could this Florida State team be the one? Who knows, still very early in the year. Identities are still being formed all around college baseball. I'll tell you what, though. Florida State, for the most part, a lineup that mashes. A couple of elite starting pitchers with MLB stuff. And if the bullpen develops, look out. And I know today, defensively, it hasn't been their best this weekend. However, 980 plus usually gets the job done throughout a 60 game season. Yeah, and I mean, you, you're gonna have some hiccups in a 60 game season too, where you're gonna have some games where it just doesn't go. But like you said, the two balls that Cam missed, and you hit him those things 100 more times, he makes every one of those plays, so. Swing and a miss. Cantu goes down. And how about Webster? Five strikeouts now. And that off-speed stuff for him has just been disgusting today. Webster last weekend at Wake Forest went five innings, gave up just one hit and one earned run. 
Three walks, five strikeouts on 82 pitches. And I'll tell you what, he hasn't thrown more than 82 pitches this season. He's at 45 right now. He's been very efficient. Dingus, base hit. Two on, one out. That's the second hard hit ball of the inning. Well, that's that violent swing of Dingus that we always talk about, it seems like, every game. Bottom of the fourth. Florida State now out hitting Louisville four to two in this game, down three. Against the offerings of the Southpaw, Evan Webster. First pitch misses. He's done a good job so far, Webster has, of limiting damage, making sure that when there's traffic on the base paths, he really hunkers down. And that off-speed pitch has been something he's been able to go to and rely upon so far in the first three innings and change. Yeah, that been able to keep the ball for the most part down in the zone. And when he's got it elevated like he did to Jaime and Dingus, they've made him pay for it. Throw just missing a double down the line right there with a the fastball. Throw in a similar spot last night. Rip one back up the box for an RBI. And it's a 1-1 count. Right back to the off speed. Pull the string for row. Just right over the top of it. It's one and two. It's that change up that we keep talking about. I'll be honest with you, I'll be surprised if he doesn't go right back to it. If he does go fastball, I think he's going to elevate it. And I think you're going to see the change up again right here. Right back to it. Ferro had no shot, two away. And I'll tell you what. I've said it too many times, I seem like already, but you've got that arm speed that he's got. I mean, you see Ferro way out in front of that changeup. Great pitch. Webster with a six strikeout already on the day. So he had two on and one out in the second inning, and he got Ferro and Holbrook to strike out. Can he do it again here to the same two hitters? Starts with a fastball. And 90 looks 100 when you're sitting on the off speed. Yeah, and you tell Holbrook took a hack right there. He was trying to go off the scoreboard and tie this game up. Hits it hard into left field, base hit. They're going to wave the runner home. Testing the arm of Eddie King Jr. Ooh. An absolute laser. And he's gunned at the plate. Oh, Eddie King Jr. Show off that arm. Field to gun Jaime Ferrer at the plate. Chris, you got Coach Brom's number yeah. over the football side? I'll tell you what, he could be throwing some bombs and Hail Marys for sure for the football team. But right there, you want anything better too for a pitcher? When you know you've given up three lasers a, and they got nothing to show for it because you got your defense playing behind you like that, that'll get everybody fired up. And look who's leading off. Oh, it, Zion Rose. It'll be one, two, three. As a pitcher, when you had your defense like that behind you, having your back, I mean, what kind of boost was that to your mentality and your morale? I mean, it just changes everything because at that point in time, you've given up three hard hit balls. You're thinking, okay, I could be giving up a run and still out on the mound. Base hit for Rose. And I mean, it just, it makes it difficult. Look at this. He wants second base and oh, he's safe. Got his hand under the tag of Ferro. It'll be a double. They might look at it, we'll see. And I'll tell you what, again, Zion Rose showing the aggressive base running for him getting to second base right there. I mean, this ball scorched up the middle, rolled into the left center field. It was a nice throw from Williams, strong. It's close.
I think it might be the right call. Faroe's tag never it's the right was call. applied. Yeah, he's safe. Well, he, he, again, you know, he's going and trying to get to the bag, and he just split the arms. And Rose is able to get underneath it and get in there for a double. And first was the positioning from Faroe there where he wanted to be? No, and I, I again, this shows what aggressive base running can do because at that point in time, no one else should take. And it is safe. Yeah, that's a good call. Good effort by Perot, but the reason why I do think Perot was up there, though, is to get that short hop so he didn't get a long in-between hop. Boy tries to lay the bunt down. He's already had one here this evening. Yeah, it's the exact same. The yeah, exact same scenarios. First inning, man on second, nobody. We're in the top of the fifth. So no one count to the senior second baseman. Nobody down. Rose at second. Louisville leads 3-0. Here against 17th ranked Florida State. Mm. Boy pulled the bat back. Holbrook held it for an extra second to try and give Brandon Henson a chance to give him a strike. He said, nope, that's off the plate. Yeah. That looked like a good pitch right here. Yeah, a little off. This is butted into the air. Florida State gets a gift. Cantu squeezes it one down. And that's going to drive Coach McDonald crazy. You see Arnold a little fired up right there. That might get something a little sparked with him. Ooh. Tough break for Hoy. He's actually trying to get out of the way. Tell you what, it's the best I've seen Arnold Slider so far this year. It's the most I've seen him throw it as well. Oh. Runner going. Ball dropped by Holbrook. I think Rose might have had third base anyway. Surprisingly enough, that is only the third stolen base. Zion Rose, he runs very well. He's now three of four. JT Benson leads his Louisville team with 16 stolen bases. This will be caught by Lodis. It was off the hands of Benson. Stayed in the infield, two away. Yeah, nice play by Lodis right here with the infield drawn in. I thought that might sneak past him. Napleton. First pitch misses. I want to know. Arnold at 71 on his pitch count. Now working in the fifth. It's a big run down a third base for Louisville. Yeah. Perhaps just uh, an inch of breathing space. And you talked earlier too about Napleton leading division two in home runs. He also led in RBIs with 87 last year as well. 2-0, misses, 3 and up. Had a pretty good conversation with Dan McDonald before this game about the zone in college baseball and it's shrinking. That one in there for a strike. It's 3 and 1. I think Napleton thought this might have been a little off. And he may have been right. He's got a point. He's got a 3-0 pitch. Now he does walk. And is the first walk issued by Arnold Runners on the corners. And talking about the zone, he said the invention of track man and the ab ability to be able to basically have every pitch at your disposal. And it's perfect, right? It'll tell you what the zone is. Every metric is Mike Posey comes out to talk to Arnold's. 
And he said college umps, I mean, they, they, they've been put underneath a microscope. And yeah. with it, they've shrunk their zones. Matt Klein. Cam Smith will go to second. Oh, he threw it away! Drew Ferro and Cam Smith not on the same page. A run will score. It has been a nightmare for Florida State's infield here on this Friday night. Well, again, that comes to communication right there. You can see right now, the sun is so bad, Ferro had no chance of catching this baseball. Cam Smith's got to go to first base. But that, again, that's getting used to these shadows, playing at different times, being able to communicate, hey, man, I'm not going to be able to see if you get this ball, I need you going to first. And that's just, that's just a tough break for the Seminoles right there. This one, right field corner, base hit. Inning continues, Eddie King Jr. And a run will score. It is 5-0 Louisville. Yeah, it makes it really tough for a team and a starting pitcher, or any pitcher actually at that, giving up outs. You make guys have to get more than those three outs in an inning against a good hitting team like Louisville. Things like this happen. I mean, the four errors say it. There's four errors and there's four unearned runs. See that stat right there. First 23 games, 14 total errors tonight, four. One two pitch for row this time. We'll go to first. And the side retired. Louisville picks up two more. Defense as well. His offense has been opportunistic. And Louisville's got a five-run lead with their best arm on the hill. Lodis, who's been struggling at the plate, tried to figure it out with the short game, but he bunted it right back to the pitcher. Yeah, just trying to find any way to spark plug something for him and the team. Canada barely had time to get started as they get into a thick of it now. With the tradition that they sing in every bottom of the fifth here at Hauser. There it is again. You don't see it a lot. Left on left or right on right. Change-ups. Webster starts Max Williams off with a change-up inside. Louisville has a to be declared for tomorrow. We talked to Dan McDonald about who they might start in game three. If this indeed goes into the rubber match. As Williams, nice grab there from Hoyt. I'll be honest, he made it look nicer than he probably needed to. Well, I think Drake did flare for the dramatic I, into the sun. Yeah, I think that sun kind of had him thrown off. And, and out the bat, it sounded like it was hit a little bit harder, too. I think he thought it was more elevated. He got up there and he was like, oh, man, I probably didn't need to do that. Just kind of died. I mean, Webster's only at 56 pitches right now. It's been exactly what the doctor ordered here for Louisville. Been able to save some arms in the pen. Here for tomorrow. However, still just the bottom of the fifth. Cardinals are just going to have to try and finish this thing out. It's yeah. been a problem for them at times this season is holding on to leads. I'll tell you what, it was first pitch breaking ball. 
Paints a fastball inside. Smith reaches out, dumps it into right center. It hangs up long enough for Rose to be able to close in. Side retired. Leading Florida State 5 0. Jamie Arnold still out on the hill. Take a look at the way Louisville has been able to produce four hits. They've already hit a bomb. And honestly, they've just capitalized on Florida State's mistakes. And they really have. Been a tough break for Arnold and the Knowles as a whole, but credit Louisville, though, for taking advantage, been aggressive on the base paths. Timely hitting when they needed it. Logan Beard does have probably the hardest hit ball of the day by either team. It was the two-run homer back in the second. That was Beard's fifth of the year. Down evens at two balls and two strikes. Hits this hard, can't shoot. Stays down on it. And he touches first base for the out. Isaac Humphrey first pitch. He waves at the slider. Comes up empty 0 and 1. Humphrey a single back in the second. One of four hits for Louisville. Hmm. I didn't know the ratio Jamie's had tonight with the slider. And therefore strike one and two. It's three in a row there. Humphrey reaches out, lifts it into foul territory. Smith makes the grab. And they're up against the fencing. Nice play from the Knowles third baseman. Yeah, that's a really good play. You start getting close to that fence, it gets a little tricky. He had the hand out there to find it if he needed to. Ball kind of came back in, makes a nice play. to the backstop. Florida State again, four errors here this evening. They made six now on the weekend. They came in top five in the NCAA in defensive fielding percentage and second in the ACC in that category. Yeah. 12 errors. Yeah. yeah, 12 coming in and six. And not even two full games. Arnold now creeping up there towards the 100 pitch mark. You got to wonder if this is his last batter. It's definitely his last inning. It could be his last batter. The two on misses, now three and one to Rose. Rose has been on base twice, reached on an error back in the first and a double in the fifth inning. Another walk, the second for Arnold, and Rose will take first. They let him see Hoy just because he's a lefty. He's got the two outs, try to finish the inning. But I am willing to bet this is his last batter no matter what. First pitch strike from Arnold. Officially 0 for 2. Runner going. Throw down. Not going to have Rose. Again, Rose showing that speed. 
The second bag of the night. Runner in scoring position here for Louisville. This one hit right to Faroe. And so tough luck there for Hoy. But the Knowles get out of it. Her entire crew here from legendary Mike Martin Fields. And Webster back out there, just 60 pitches. He has been efficient and dominant. And there he went again, left on left change, and now they just did the shift. Third baseman going out to right field. There it is. Off-speed catches the outer half of the strike zone. Yeah, it's nice. one and two. Nice breaking ball. I'll tell you what, I'm ready for college baseball, and you wouldn't expect to hear this from a pitcher. Do the same thing as Major League Baseball, get rid of that shift. Not a fan. One, two, on the ground. And the play made there by Hoy. And I know a lot of people make the argument, well, you make the adjustment, hit it the other way, and, and eh, that's fine, but just play the game the way it was designed to be played. Just quit trying to overthink the whole thing. All smiles right now for Louisville. As Jaime Ferrer will step into the box with one down in the sixth. First pitch strike. <laughs> Never fails. Webster, everyone, change up first pitch. Ferrer has a single in this one, back in the fourth. Now down 0-2. Here comes the changeup again. <laughs> he might go breaking ball, but it's going to be something soft. Right back to something soft, like you said. Ferrer stays alive. A little too good of a pitch, though, 0-2. I don't want to leave that thing over the middle. Rare pokes it out and gets it into the right field bleachers. Seminole faithful trying. Create some energy that Hauser. Webster's been tough. 0 2 misses. Better 0 2 pitch right there from Webster trying to get Ferrer to chase. And he did get him to chase eventually. Strikeout number seven for Webster. Yep, went back to the off speed again. You see this down in the zone, or down out of the zone, right over the plate. Swing and miss right there. Webster has just been outstanding today with that off speed stuff. A season high for Webster. No seven strikeouts. And the shift happening again. His beard goes over into right center. Gantu tried to bunt it where Beard vacated. Fouled it off. It's 0 2. You know what? I think right now, with it being a 5 0 game, Louisville's okay with that with two outs. If you want to bunt it, go ahead. Tried to burn him inside with the fastball. Setting up something soft. Actually, he's got him set up, yeah, for anything, really. But most likely you're right, something soft. See what he does here on one, two. Yep. Off speed, another strikeout. 
two of them in the inning for Webster. I mean, it's been a master class. I've had holes. We'll try and keep it at a five run deficit. Noah Short. Saw his numbers there. He will be tasked. You see his numbers on the year. One of the most often used relievers for Florida State. It's Benson, Napleton, and Klein. Due up for Dan McDonald's Cardinals. Yeah, this is definitely a guy Link Jarrett wants to get going. This is a good opportunity in a 5 nothing game to get Short out there. Because the big thing for Short right now is just snatching that ball glove side off the plate. His walks are way too high at 11 to 9 innings. But man, when he's in the zone, he is difficult to hit. Hasn't given up many hits. Three one here to Benson. Snapped a good slider, Benson. Just gets a piece of it. Full count to the shortstop Lodis, and he makes the play. First pitch strike in there from short. Yeah, good fastball, 89 miles an hour. Start throwing the ball that hard from down there. That's another reason, like I said, they really want to get him going. Good looking pitch there, didn't get the call. Slider. And the one two coming to the Cardinals catcher. Swing and a miss. Had the hook diving away from him. And there's two away. Now this is that slider right there. Starts on the outer half, finishes off the black and down. It's tough to hit from a right-handed hitter. Klein hits it hard to right center. It's carrying, and it's off the screen. Trouble handling it in right fields. I believe that was Tibbs. And Klein going to get into second base with a double. Yeah, Klein got a fastball middle in. Able to turn on it, and drive it off the screen for a double. Good piece of hitting. See the exit velocity 101. Pinch runner coming in, Corbin Dickerson. As Eddie King Jr. takes a pitch off the plate. Couple of strikeouts for King Jr., but an RBI double in the fifth. The throw back, Ed Ferro scrambling to get it. Yeah. 
Runner at second, two outs. 1-0, make it 2 at That slider just off the plate. Went to the heater. And King Jr. fouled it back. Check down to first base. Say did not go. As Mike Mazza, the first base on. Fans didn't like it, but I think it was the right call. Here's the three one. In there for a strike three and two. On deck is Gavin Keeler. Down offering. Foul away, staying alive is King Jr. He got that one up to 90. Andy King Jr. didn't play back in 2022, missing the season with an injury. Played 50 games a year ago. He's had himself a pretty good night so far, but that time short gets the better of the Cardinals' left fielder. Strikeout there to end the end. And short right here, dropping down, elevated that fastball. King not able to catch up to it. Looked like he was looking. Webster still out there, painting corners. Evan Webster, who has his career high now in strikeouts with seven. Excuse me, not with eight. Previously, it was six. Dingus, center field. It's got carry to it off the wall. And Dingus is going to be running for a while. He's around second into third. He'll stop there with a the triple. Florida State has got some life here in the seventh. Tell you what, Dingus has been swinging the hot bat all weekend. He gets a breaking ball up in the zone and drives it in the center field just sitting on it. It gets that odd carom off the way the, the wall shapes out there in center, and it shoots to left field. Then just easy into third base. Fired up, trying to get the dugout and the Knowles ready to go. Got a pinch hitter as Dingus starts things off with a 109 mile an hour off the bat triple. It's Cal Fisher pinch hitting for Drew Farrow. So perhaps Link Jarrett not liking the way Farrow has handled the off speed of Webster from the right side. And they're going to try and give Cal Fisher a shot. Yep. First pitch missing to Cal Fisher. And Fisher, who really impressed in the offseason for Florida State's coaching staff. Top ranked position player in the state of Wisconsin coming out of high school. Limited at bats here on the year. He swings and misses. Same thing on that changeup. I'll tell you what, especially for an incoming freshman, you know, you don't see a lot of those in high school. Wayne Jarrett said he might be the best freshman I've ever coached. It's been tough sledding, right? You've got two guys up the middle in Lodis and Faro who come from different programs, transferring in. And Fisher was just the odd man out. A bunch of really good options. Yeah, you see that right there. Number two ranked player in Wisconsin, number one shortstop. Home run against Butler. Back in his first career at bat on opening day. I got to be honest with you right here. I'm telling Fisher, you're sitting off. I'm, it's a 3-1 count. I'm sitting off speed. Typically, you sit fastball and adjust. I'm sitting off speed right here. He throws the fastball and hits with it. All right, full count, and then I can do it. We actually got a fastball down, probably out of the zone. McGuire Holbrook is due up next. 
And Lodis would be after him. Then just at third. I think you're fixing to see Webster's change up right here. Hits it hard and foul. Ooh. He got the change up, was able to barrel it. Just out front still. Chris, it's a Florida State team that hasn't been shut out this season. This is the seventh pitch of the at-bat. From the veteran to the rook. A mile high, coming back towards the Seminole dugout. Napleton gives it chase. It's onto the netting. That was a tough one right there for Fisher. I don't know if you saw that. In the middle of the bat, his, I don't know what that is on his left hand. If it was his glove or what. It was frustrating. He slung it off right before the pitch came. He just went and picked it up and put it back on. What does Webster go to here? Again, he can go with whatever he wants, to be honest with you. He could come in with the fastball or go back to that changeup. I mean, the changeup's been his bread and butter. Eighth pitch of the at bat. Just misses. Oh, Webster wanted it. How about the freshman? Delivering with a walk there. Yeah, nine pitch at bat. Get the walk. Now you got runners on the corner with nobody. The big thing is you're starting to get Webster's pitch count up a little bit too now. Now he's at 84. I say career high in the number of pitches and Dan McDonald coming out. He had a couple of words as well for Brandon Henson, the home plate umpire. That was a pretty good pitch. It was, just missed. But I think it, it was up and out. I got it. I mean, you know. Turned run in 11 and a third innings pitch, 16 Ks. And that one run came off a home run. This one hit to short, could be two. To second for one, and Louisville is able to turn the double play. Dingus will touch home. However, I think the Cardinals will gladly take the two outs. Absolutely. Pitcher's best friend right there, 6 4 3. Taylor made. You see right here, he goes fast, sinking fastball. Great job by Louisville turning that. They made it look easy. I got she's going another pinch hitter right here with Diamez Ross. They are going to go to Ross indeed. To bat for Lodis. That is a big time double play turned by Keelan and Hoy. It prevents the big inning. If Bivens able to get out of anything else with two outs. And it closes the book on Webster as well. One earned run, six innings. Heck of an outing for him. And Bivens coming in just throwing that sinking fastball. Bivin came in against Wake Forest on Sunday as Ross swings through it. Mid-90s heat. Got the final 10 outs of the game against the Demon Deacons. And Louisville able to salvage game three of that series. Ross catches a piece. Staying alive. able to see it down, count evens. And Diamas spitting at that break, come all down, 85. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Flared out in the left, and easy catch there for King Jr. Florida State able to get one, but Louisville. And Rowan now. But before that, you see Cal Fisher's at short in place of Alex Lodis. He batted for Ferro. And at second base, Titan Kamaka. So a new middle infield for FSU. 
and Rowan, who they really like. When you talk to Micah Posey, Link Jarrett, the freshman from Panama City, has a fiery personality. A guy that can create momentum for his team on the mounds as Keelan sends that one into the left field bleachers. They want to get him some opportunities. Fastball can get up into the mid-90s, but he prefers to sit in the low 90s. You see the ERA right now a little bit higher than they'd like. The walks a little bit higher, but the K's 15 of them, seven and a third. Yeah, when he attacks in the zone, and he can hit with that breaking ball like that, he's dangerous. But again, it's just, again, being a freshman, still learning it, but it's that consistency, that strike consistency they need to see a little bit more from him. Yep, he gets Keelan swinging. And Keelan strikes out. That is the 10th strikeout for Florida State pitching here tonight. Last night, they struck out 17. And you, and you see this right here, that breaking ball. I mean, it didn't even make it to the plate because it's got that tight break, though. He gets a check swing for another punch out for the Knowles. <laughs> Rowan's last outing was against Clemson. He pitched an inning. Yeah, he started that infamous ninth inning in game two. No hits, but it did walk two. And two earned runs were credited to his tally. Pitched a clean eighth against the Tigers. They ran him back out there. Struggled. The first two batters walked them both. And then the tires came off, so to speak. And here's his bounce back opportunity. He's done well so far. The 0-2. High and outside. Logan Beard, one for three. Here in game two. There's a strikeout on the breaking ball. And tell you what you're seeing different right now from Rowan, too. Starting the season off, you were seeing a lot of fastballs from him. Now I think they're starting to figure out, hey, let's get him going with this breaking ball and see how it do goes. I'll tell you what, it's been cooking so far the first two batters he's faced. Rowan had previously pitched in the middle of the week against Stetson for Florida State back before the Clemson series. Two innings, a shutout baseball, four strikeouts. The Knolls shut out, Stetson won nothing that afternoon. There's that 94 mile an hour fastball. Mike Posey told me yesterday, this kid's just a big time competitor. He loves the moment, wants the ball. It's Humphrey offered at it. They're gonna check down, yeah, they, he did go. That's Adam Dowdy, last night's home plate umpire at third now this evening. I'll tell you what, right now, he's gotten two check swings at pitches that didn't go further than 54 feet. And that speaks volumes for the break on that breaking ball. Swing and a miss, right back to it. Chris Chavez, you're good at your job. Shut down arm for Louisville so far this season out of the pen. Came in first and third, nobody out. And got the job done, induced a double play. And then was able to get Ross to weakly fly out to left. And he limited the Knolls' damage to just one. And Williams did not go around that time. And it'll be interesting to see how the Knolls try and adjust to the offerings of now Bivin. Much different than what they saw with Webster. I mean, Bivin trusts the stuff, right? I mean, it's, it's going to be firm. It's yeah, coming at you. Yeah, he's coming at you, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, you see, you see right there, you're getting 92 to 95 fastball. When he gets it down, throws it, it's got some sink. He's throwing a power breaking ball at 85. Williams, swing and a miss. Hater, and yeah, that's the second time Williams has gone down. And that could be the end of the five game hitting streak for Max. And there's that fastball, 95 elevated. Williams just not able to lay off. Oh, 
Cam Smith. He's one for three. First pitch missing, just inside. Saw Napleton try and frame it and bring it back a little bit. Yeah, you also see that late life on Bivin Ball. Weekly to third. Beer charging off balance throw in time to get Smith. Nice work from McCoy. Yeah, first base. A nice play by baseman. That's a nice play by Beard too, because he's got an awkward angle there to get that and make that throw off balance. It's a heck of a play. And you see this, that sinker right there. Cam just pounds it in the ground. It's a heck of a play by Beard. Now James Tibbs. First pitch in the other batter's box. 1 and 0 to the Knowles right field. Tibbs 0 for 3. Did he go around? Yes, he did. Tibbs can't believe it. Bowser Faithful doesn't like it. Call. Tibbs trying to hold through. up. Now one and two. Yeah, the bat might have just got around. Yep. yep. That's all you got to get that barrel past the plate. Bivens got Tibbs in a hole. Nine. This is with that one, two and two. It'll be interesting to see is if Bivens can close it down. Who does Louisville go to tomorrow? Riley Phillips has been one of the answers as Tibbs stays alive. Dan McDonald was quite candid. He said, if we're in a position to use Riley, he's been so important to us. We're using him earlier than game three. However, it might be shaping up that you'll have Riley available tomorrow to start. He went four innings of quality baseball against Wake Forest last weekend. Tibbs on the ground. Boy, off one hop. And Bivin, a clean bottom of the eighth campuses you'll find in the United States. I'll tell you what, though, if you haven't visited Louisville's campus, that's how you draw up an athletic facility. Yeah, Everything is all in one area. It's beautiful, it and they spend beautiful. a lot of money on a lot of different sports. You got Churchill Downs right there, by where Louisville plays baseball. Yeah, it's, it's like you said, it's, it's gorgeous. Five to one, Cardinals. And Hudson Rowan gonna try and keep it right there. As Zion Rose lifts it, playable for Cantu. And he makes the grab and foul territory. Big out getting, getting Zion Rose off the bases there. All the havoc he's been wrecking all night. Now Bill and Hoy. We talked about who Louisville might throw tomorrow. Florida State going to Connor Whitaker. They have felt really good about what he does. On game threes, midweeks, bullpen, doesn't matter. He's been their team captain all year. And someone who's been so reliable now for a number of seasons, three years in to his college career. They've, they're have they going to like it if it's a rubber match to have Whitaker on the hill. Well, I'll tell you what, he's Mr. Consistency. You know what you're getting from him. It's kind of like Chick-fil-A. You know what you're going to get when you go to a Chick-fil-A. You know what you're getting with Connor Whitaker. He's going to fill it up with strikes, mix up his pitches. I mean, you're going to get a great, great guy pitch in the last game of a series. Now two and two here to Hoy after he fouls it off. Was that your play at getting some NIL from Chick-fil-A? <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, Chick Chick-fil-A is pretty consistent. You know what you're getting with the nuggets and the sandwich. You pretty much got the same thing there. And that's Conwood Connery. You're going to get a guy who's going to throw strikes. And 
to check down the third. Hoy didn't go around. It's a full count. Strike three called outside corner. 93 on the gun. And for Rowan, that is his fourth K. Yeah, you see you get a fastball right here, outer third. I got a little help from the umpire, but he'll definitely take it. Slip right there. Well, you want to owe to JT Benson. Strike. Let's go, Justin Timberlake. And the two one high. Three and one to Benson. He was hit by a pitch in the third. It's been his only time on base. So far tonight. He works a walk. Sometimes those emotions, you know, you get those two quick outs, kind of lose focus, feel like you can have another quick inning. One thing I definitely had to adjust to my freshman year, I'd, there'd be times I'd be out there and i get two quick outs, i lose focus. Next thing I know, I've walked two guys in a row. You really got to stay focused. Here's Luke Napleton. You sign that on with your girlfriend? You must be a friend. Put it in the zone, baby. Let's go. Get the heat. Get back, Luke. Come on, Luke. I know it's a One one count coming to the catcher with a runner on first. And therefore, strike. Here's the one two. Bounced in there, heading down to second Benson. He'll take the back. Great job by Benson. Didn't even hesitate. As soon as he saw it out of the hand, he was gone. Actually, a good job by Holbrook to be able to even block that breaking ball. Full count. Now to Napleton. And another walk in the inning. Back-to-back -back walks for Louisville. We'll have two on. And two out. Two on and two outs here for McCoy. He will bat when he came in for Klein. 1-0 in there for a strike. Got a special guest hopping on the mic here with us in the booth. Former ACC Player of the Year on the softball side, Alex Powers. Hello. Hello. 
Glad to be here. Late in the ball game, but better late than never, right? That's right. Runner going. Two guys going to get in. They're going to advance, I should say. And Benson has to hold up at third. He thought about coming home. He slid into the bag at third. And the ball kicking away almost into the seminal dugout. Rowan heads up to run over there and get it because Holbrook was not able to spot the ball. Yeah, you'll see this right here. I mean, another one of those 54 footers. Holbrook doing the best he can to try to keep it in front of him. 2-1 misses, 3-1. and one. Alex, you're over the softball side right now. How did that end? Yeah, they hit a, a walk-off uh, three-run home run, so that was good. Another walk-off home run to end the night. That's your softball playing NC State this weekend. On the ground, Cantu, he's got it. And he'll touch the back. We'll keep Alex on for the bottom of the ninth. Four-seamer as well. Ferrer offering at the first pitch, known to be an aggressive hitter. Ferrer so far here tonight is one for three. That one misses inside. One and one. Chris, I don't know your guys' strategy, but for us at this part of the game, we're typically taking until we get a strike, until we get the tying runner on. And, and I was surprised he swung at the first pitch, too, and then he got the ball, and then he got to hit on the third one, but I'm with you. I know 11 was that way, especially when we played. You know, he was definitely, hey, we're going to make sure we get a strike before we do anything. But Jaime being the aggressive swinger he was, he took a hack on the first one, took a ball, and then lines went up the middle, so. so Jaime Ferrer now with his second hit of the game and of the weekend. Alex, you can't get it all back at once, right? Yeah, absolutely. Just chipping away, right? Pitch by pitch, at bat by at bat. And, you know, Jaime Ferrer is definitely, I think, the exception, not the rule to that kind of approach. There you go. <laughs> I was typically the rule. I, I wasn't necessarily the swinger. <laughs> hey, whatever works, right? right? Just gets the job done. So, Alex, I don't know how you felt as a player, but I know... I always like people on base. If I'm like if I'm FSU, I want people on base at all times here. I don't want a home run to clear them. What about you? What do you think? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, right? Because get, getting people on base puts you in some big situational opportunities more than anything. And that's what you hit for, and that's what you excel in. Cantu unfortunately hit it right at Isaac Humphrey. That ball was stroked. But Louisville's going to take it. They don't care. One down. I'll tell, you, for Tucker Biven. I'll tell you what, FSU, though, this inning has had some good swings on Bivin, which they hadn't had in the first two innings against him. Here's Marco Dingus. Hit a grand slam last night. Dingus is simply on fire right now. He's got three hits in this one. Back-to-back three-hit games. Yeah, he's also an aggressive hitter. Tell you what, even his foul balls, you jump up to look at to see what might happen. You remember what time of he told us down there? Florida State's assistant coach and recruiting coordinator. I'm actually surprised he's still inside the white lines. He's at third base right now. And he said, I am terrified every time Marco Dingus comes up. This one back to Bivin. He's going to take the shirt out at first. And there's two away. To second goes Ferrer. But the Knowles now down to their final out. Louisville needs just one out to force this rubber match. Comes down to the freshman, Cal Fisher. Inside to Fisher. Chris, I think you look for a lot of momentum at this point in the game, too. You're just trying to keep the momentum on your side. And yeah, especially with two outs. Yeah, I agree. Exactly. I mean, anything you can do to find a way to get on base right here, whether like there, you could tell he seemed frustrated and wear that off the shoulder. Right. Center field coming in. It's going to, I think it was trapped. 
a run's gonna score. It was Zion Rose trying to dive in on it. He looked fooled as the ball hit right at him. And the Knowles are gonna get a run. Yeah, I don't know if it was the sound off the bat that fooled him or what, because, I mean, Fisher was jammed on this ball. And Rose just kind of waited on it. And it made a late break, wasn't able to make the catch. What do you see here, Alex? Those are sometimes the hardest ones to judge, I feel like. Kind of the low line drive that you don't really get a good read on just how deep they're actually hit. And so Rose getting fooled on that one a couple of steps short coming in. Hey, the Knowles will take it. It's five to two. And Mac Holbrook, if he can get on the tying run is on deck. And that bring up Diamez Ross, who has missed so much time. Oh no. Titan Kamaka who came into the game. That is right. I'm sorry to come play second. Let's see what he gets there. 1-0 to Mac. Well, that's pretty good breaking ball. It's a real good looking breaking ball by Biven. But then do you think if your on deck hitter comes up that maybe they make that switch back to Ross? I don't know. That's a good call. <laughs> I mean, because you got a righty. But I mean, I think they've already pulled him out, so I don't know if he can come back in. The 1 1, the heater. 93. Holbrook behind it. Holbrook in his last plate appearance hit into a 6-4-3 double play. 1-2 pitch. That is going to be a nice play at second. The throw, the scoop. He couldn't hang on. Heading to third. Fisher. Runners on the corners. Don't go home yet. Wow. I mean, what an outstanding play that is. Second base right there. And, man. A lot going on on that play, I'll tell you what. McCoy not able to come up with the scoop there, but look at this missile up the middle. Oh. That's an incredible play by Hoy to I'm, keep it in the infields. And then McCoy just, that's a big hop, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's a tough play. Well, Alex, you said it earlier. Piece it together, piece it together. You got the time run at the plate. Momentum and hitting is contagious. You know if you're McCoy, you're kicking yourself on that one. Kind of the sweep up was maybe a little too much there, but great play at second base by Hoy. Here. Here is Titan Kamaka. Runners on the corners and two down. He represents the tying run. Watches the first pitch. Down and away. Napleton keeps it out in front of him. Kamaka, the six-foot infielder from Orlando, the sophomore. A good take right there by Kamaka, too, because he's an aggressive swinger as well. Well, Chris, and he's the tying run at the plate now, so now you don't have to take to your strike. You can swing away from the first pitch you like. There you go. He hit five home runs a year ago. In on the hands. Foul down the third baseline. And it's one ball and one strike. Chris is a pitcher, if you're Biven, how do these moments affect you? What was your strategy to try and get yourself and your heart rate down to be able to finish? I didn't want it down. I wanted my heart rate up. I, <laughs> I, I, I thrive for these moments. Seriously, I did. I love this situation. But for me right now, though, you did have to harness it. I wanted it up, but you had to harness that energy. On the ground, this should do it. To second. And the game is over. Louisville gets it done here in game two. Five to two final. And we will have a really fun game three.